So what happened to Ananias and Sapphira? We're going to answer that question coming up next. I'm Dana with Wisdom Calls, where we help you to understand the Bible better so that you can have a better relationship with God. In this series, we are talking about, we're calling it Acts and Answered, because we are asking our way through the book of Acts, reading and discussing one chapter at a time. So far, we've asked questions like, why did Jesus tell the disciples not to leave Jerusalem? And what happened when the Holy Spirit came down? You can watch all these previous videos so that you can catch up. In the future, we're going to be covering topics like, who is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for? And is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for today? So I hope that you continue to join us each with new, each new video. And speaking of joining us, I wanna make sure to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. That's one way that we know that you are here joining us um, with every new video that's gonna be coming out. So go ahead and hit subscribe. By the way, it's free. So hit that subscribe button. And so that you make sure that you get notified every new time that I upload a new video, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to ring that alarm bell that's right next to the subscribe button. Go ahead and give that a ring. Um, because otherwise you might not know when we post new material, you could go weeks and you'd be missing out and uh, we'll be moving ahead in the study. So I wanna make sure that every time I upload a new video, you guys get that notification right away so that you can keep on with us in our Bible study. So um, trust me, you are not gonna wanna miss a single video. So with that being said, let's get right into answering today's question, which comes straight from Acts chapter five. Um, and we're gonna do a little review before getting to the answer of that question found in Acts chapter five. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we read in Acts chapter four just briefly. We see that the church is starting to grow like crazy. There's miracles that have been happening. Um, Jewish believers are coming to faith in Jerusalem um, like, like crazy. So it's really exciting what's happening in the early part of the church. Um, and with that being said, also, they are getting together as a body. So they are realizing that some of the Jews are going to accept the message that Jesus is the Messiah and some are not. And so the ones that do, they're getting together to pray and they have a community together. And in fact, they're making sure to take care of each other's needs. So it says that nobody was without what they needed. Um, other people would sell off property or um you know, things that they might have, they would sell it and that they would use that money to help out other people. And so we see that God is all about charity and taking care of each other, that we don't necessarily need a government to do that, but that through the church, God intends to meet the needs of his people. And so we see that happening in Acts chapter four. Let's begin. Verse one, now a man named Ananias together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself but he brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept, your, kept for yourself some of the money that you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. A great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward and wrapped up his body and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price that you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, it is the price. Verse nine, and Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen. The feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. So this is a pretty um, intense and kind of scary passage of scripture. It's, I mean, not only did the people in that day have great fear of the Lord when this happened, but even we, read this and we're just like whoa that's like serious consequences what's going on here and um, as Peter says in verse 3 that it's not that it's not so much that he kept a portion back for himself it's that he made it seem as though he's bringing it all before the Apostles feet and so here other disciples had been selling off their property and putting the money at the disciples feet for the use of the church to go ahead and use for people that were needing that needed something and um 
but here they had an opportunity they could have brought some of it and then said hey listen this is a portion of the money from the land we want to donate this but instead they want to get the accolades they want to get the kudos you know from everybody the this feeling of look what I've done look at this gift that I've done and have everybody look at them as though they did something great even though they kept something back and so here it's very serious what's happened and the reason that it's so serious is what Peter says at the end of verse 4 you have not lied to human beings but to God and that's really the point like we need to not lie to the Holy Spirit we need to not lie to God because it's a very very serious thing um, sin is serious and and this is especially egregious what has happened here now then we see that his wife comes in and maybe some of us are thinking well is it really fair that his wife gets killed as well I mean isn't she just doing what her husband told her to do? But it actually says that they conspired together about this. And there's a couple other examples in the scripture because, and we talked about this before, God wants us to submit to the authorities in our life, you know? Um, God wants us to submit to our husband. He wants us to submit to governmental authorities. And in this day and age, they were to submit also to religious leaders. And, and if you have a pastor, you know, he wants you to submit to the authorities in your life. But, um, if that authority is encouraging you to do something aside from God's will, you are not to submit in that instance. I mean, we saw with Peter when the Sanhedrin was coming and the teachers of the law were coming and saying, don't speak anymore in this name of Jesus. Whatever you do, stop speaking in the name of Jesus. They said, is it right for us to listen to you or listen to God? And so in this particular instance too, this wife has an opportunity where she should have come clean. She should have said, no, this isn't right. In fact, she should have said to her husband, this isn't right. We shouldn't be doing this. Um, um, so her fate is the same as his because she commits the same sin that he does. And actually there's a place um, in the Old Testament as well where um, David had been on the run from um, King Saul. David had been anointed that he would be the future king, but Saul was the one who was king at that time. And Saul had been chasing him and he'd been on the run. And um, while he was out with his men, he was actually protecting a certain man's flocks and sheep and so when he was out with his men he would make sure that the sheep were okay the shepherds were okay that other bands of raiders wouldn't come and steal off their flock and steal their sheep and so David had been helping this particular man and when David had his time of need he came to the man and he said will you help me I have need and this man said I'm not gonna help you what do I owe you I don't owe you anything even though David had basically been his insurance prop his bodyguard so to speak his bodyguards out in the wilderness out in the desert um, defending his property and stuff and this guy said I don't owe you anything and so David was actually coming um, to destroy this man and everything that he owned because of his poor response and the wife of this man even though the man himself was wicked the wife was wise and she understood what had happened and so she came and he, she greeted she ran out and she greeted David and all of his troops with all of these provisions that they needed and made sure to provide for them even though her husband didn't want that to happen and you might think wow isn't she disobeying her husband isn't that bad but um, she knew that that was what the right thing was to do and so she brought those things before David and David said you know basically you have saved your you've saved your lives and the lives of your household because we were coming to destroy everyone that belonged to this wicked man and you by your wisdom and your act have com have protected me from committing a sin and also have protected your whole family and then God ends up striking dead this wicked husband of hers um, he is he's struck dead and she ends up going and living um, and being the king's wife um, and I believe she's actually in Jesus's lineage as well so that's really interesting and, and it just talks about how we are to act righteous regardless of those around us regardless of if our boss is acting righteous or our pastor or um, our husband whoever the authorities are that are in our lives um, we are responsible for acting according to God's will and not getting swept away by these authorities that are trying to lead opposite from God's will in general yes you are to submit to your authorities but in this case when you have to choose between God's way or man's way choose God's way okay so here we go we're gonna continue on verse 12 the Apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all of the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade so again, this was like that open space in um, before the temple area. It would have been like an open space that was there that anyone could go. And it said no one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. So the people of the area thought, wow, 
this Jesus and what has happened. This is awesome. But they were afraid to join them. And yet we're going to find out, I think it says here why, but it's because of the um, persecution that they're starting to receive from the elders in the church, from, or not the elders in the church, excuse me, the elders in the, um, in the synagogues, you know, the, the Sanhedrin, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the, pre, the high priest, all this kind of stuff. So it says, um, but they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. And again, these are not um, Gentile believers or those outside the Jewish faith at this particular point in time. They are, this is in Israel, and they are Jewish people coming to faith in Messiah, recognizing that Jesus is Hamashiach, Yeshua Hamashiach, which is Jesus the Messiah. Okay. Um, 15, as a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on them as he passed by. This is pretty interesting. Crowds gathered from also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and also those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. So the Holy Spirit is um, manifest in such power right now and especially through Peter that even if his shadow falls upon the sick they are being healed now is it Peter himself that's so special no it's the Holy Spirit in him that is that is doing this work because they're, they're testifying of Jesus verse 17 then the high priest and all of his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy they arrested the Apostles and put them in public jail but during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go and stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. So what is this new life that he's speaking of? Okay, so he's, he's saying, speak to this of this new life to the Jews in Jerusalem. Speak to them about this new life. What is the new life? The new life is that we are no longer under the sin of curse anymore because the um, Passover lamb, Jesus, who was crucified at Passover, the, the, the whole festival and the whole holiday. And this is really appropriate that we're talking about this right now because we are right now celebrating Passover. This is the Passover season right now. And what is Passover the season that celebrate? What do they celebrate at Passover? It's celebrating deliverance from the oppression of slavery in Egypt. So they've been in bondage in Egypt, in slavery. They've been crying out to God and um, and Pharaoh kept hardening his heart, hardening his heart, and he didn't want to let them go. And God was going to bring one final um, curse upon Egypt, and the firstborn of their children was going to be killed because they refused to listen to God and let his people go. But God provided for them, and he said, what you need to do is take a lamb and sacrifice it. And you need to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and on the sides of the of the door and when the angel of death comes by it's going to pass over you and your household otherwise you would be stricken as well but but um, if you put the blood if you are covered by the blood then you're taken care of and Moses established that this was to be um, celebrated and remembered for every generation after that what is the reason for this? Because it's a foreshadowing of the um, atonement for our sins that was going to come through the Messiah and um, the deliverance from the slavery, the curse of sin and death. So through Adam, because of Adam's sin, all of us have lived and been living under the curse of sin and death. So we've been living in slavery. We've been groaning and crying out to God. Um, you know, our mortal bodies, they're filled with pain, they age, all of these things. And God is saying, um, he, God is going to set us free. He's going to redeem us from that. Just like he brought um, the Israelites, the Hebrews, out of bondage to Egypt. He wants to bring all of mankind out of bondage to sin and slavery. And so here, Jesus, the Passover lamb, Yeshua, was sacrificed just as it was foretold of the prophets. I believe Isaiah 53 speaks of this. Isaiah the prophet and many other prophets predicted not only how Jesus would come to this planet, um, where he would live, different places he would go, and the type of death he would die. All of those things, everything is foretold in the Hebrew scriptures. And so um, when Jesus came and he died on the cross, he died to forgive you and me of our sins because he came and he received the, uh, the wrath of God in our place. And this is really important to understand for those of you guys that maybe were not raised in a Christian home, you don't know what this whole belief in Jesus is and what it even means. Like I said earlier, all of us have sinned and we have been living in a world that is cursed with sin and with death ever since the time of Adam. 
And God never intended for it to be like that. And so when you see things that are suffering and you say, well, how could a good God, how could a good God allow us to go through this kind of suffering? How could a good God allow people like Hitler to come or people like those in Syria that are, um, you know, using chemical warfare against their own people and all this kind of stuff? How could a good God allow those things to happen? Well, a good God didn't create the world as it currently is. A good God created everything perfect without sin, without suffering, without death, without any of those things. But he also created us with a free will and mankind rebelled against God. And when we rebelled against God, the Bible says that the wages or the, uh, the payment basically for sin is death. And so we have been dying, our bodies have been dying ever since this happened, but God is so good and he doesn't want for us to be forever separated from him because of our sin. See, he's holy and we are sinful. How can we be together with God? But he wants us back. We are his children. So he is both completely merciful and completely just. Because on the one hand, we, we say, well, you know, I should be able to go to heaven. I'm a good person. I'm a good enough person, we think, right? But we're not comparing ourselves with God. We're comparing ourselves with other people. Well, I'm not as bad as them. I'm not as bad as them. And, um, but at the same time, we don't think people like Hitler should be in heaven. We think there's no way he should go to heaven. He should go to hell. He deserves hell. Right? So we know and want God to be just, but we don't want God to be just with us. So we want God to let us off the hook and hold other people accountable is basically how we want to do it. And the amazing thing about God is he is both 100% justice and 100% mercy all at the same time. He's not one or the other. And through Jesus, he's able to fulfill both of those things. Through Jesus, he's able to pour out the wrath that we deserved. So God pours out the wrath that we deserved on Jesus. And for those of us that receive that payment for our sins, we get this new life that they're talking about here. We get new life. We get now the mercy of God, the love of God. We get all of those amazing things. Um, but for those that don't re receive Jesus as their payment, then they are going to have to pay the penalty for that themselves. And that is, um, you know, in hell forever, um, eternal suffering in hell. So, um, it's really important that we understand what the new life is. And so they're preaching about this new life to the Jews to say, look, everything that our ancestors taught us, everything that our prophets taught us in the past, this has been fulfilled by Jesus. And if you accept him, you can be in right relationship with God. You no longer need a high priest anymore. And this is another thing that, you know, the high priest, that's going to make them jealous because they like to be that intermediary. They wanted to be the one. You only can go through me to get to God. But no, now God has said anyone can come to him if they come through the one and only high priest with it, which is Jesus. So Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. He is our high priest. He is also our king. So there's so many amazing things that Jesus fulfills. So this is the new life that they are preaching in the temple courts. So they get released from jail here. The, the angel sets them free, tells them to go stand in the temple courts and preach, even though that's exactly opposite of what they've been told to do from the leaders, but that's what the angel says to go do. Verse 21, at daybreak, they entered the, entered the temple courts just as they had been told and began to teach the people, just like I'm teaching you here today. So um, what matters is, is, do you receive the teaching or don't you? So when the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin and the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and they sent to the jail for the apostles. So here they're ready to have court. So they've got the full council of everyone together, the full assembly of all the elders, and they are ready to throw the book at them. But upon arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked with guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. And this is my, this is something I want you to think about here. If you have been thrown in jail, because you've been doing something, you've been thrown in jail, and all of a sudden an angel comes to you and lets you out, do you want to go back to doing the thing that got you put in jail in the first place? I mean, if we are talking about human nature, not God, spirit nature but if we're talking about human nature if this were something that was originate originating from man their response would be I'm gonna get out of jail and I'm gonna run away that way I don't have to get punished that way I don't have to this is like my literal get out of jail free card I'm out of here but because it's not of man's origin this isn't originating from man they don't behave here how we would behave in this instance, they're behaving how God wants them to behave. In other words, they've gone back to the scene of the, 
crime of preaching and they're doing it all over again. Okay, then someone said, so verse 25, here we are, then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. We gave you strict orders not to teach. Oh, excuse me. I, I skipped down a bit here. Verse 26. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. So instead of coming and dragging them off away, they said, you guys come with us. And the apostles willingly went with them. I mean, this is just amazing. So the apostles were brought in and made to stand before the Sanhedrin and were questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. So they don't like the fact that they're being accused of Jesus being killed. He says, you're determined to make us guilty of this man's blood, which honestly, we're all guilty of this man's blood. We are all guilty of the fact that Jesus had to die. All of us are at fault for that. It's not just them. It's not just the high priest. It's everybody. And Peter said to the apostles, Oh, excuse me. And Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on the cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. You guys, this is the good news. When, we, when you hear preaching of the gospel, the word gospel itself means good news. And what is the good news? That God wants to forgive our sins so that we can have right relationship with him. That is great news. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So who does the Holy Spirit belong to? It belongs to those who obey God. And it says that not only are we witnesses, but the Holy Spirit is a witness. So when we witness to what God has done, we are sharing with our friends and family about the change that God has made in our lives. You know, for me, I used to hold grudges. I used to have unforgiveness in my heart, bitterness, and all those kinds of things, hatred and anger. And God healed me and set me free of those things where now I can freely forgive other people for their sins against me. I mean, that's amazing, those changes. And so that is the good news, are these changes. But not only do we with our mouth, are we responsible for witnessing to our family and our friends about the goodness of God in our lives, the amazingness of what God has done in our lives, but who else witnesses with us? What does the Bible say? The Holy Spirit witnesses with us. So, and how does the Holy Spirit witness with us? Well, there's a couple ways I can think of. Number one, we just read about it, was signs and wonders. So miracles and signs and wonders. That's the natural way. When God works, his natural way to work is supernatural. We should not be surprised or we shouldn't be afraid to ask for supernatural because that is how God operates. He is super above the natural, outside of the natural. So when you pray to God, expect supernatural things to happen because when God acts, it is always super natural. And another way that I can think of that God uses the Holy Spirit or that the Holy Spirit uses to bear witness is that he's the one that the Bible says convicts us of our sin. You know, he's the one who's in our conscious telling us when we shouldn't be doing something. You know, so so he is convicting the world and convincing the world, convict, convincing the world of their sin and, and leading them to know that this is the truth. If you seek God, you will find him, the Bible says, when you seek him with all your heart. And I know not only from my own personal life, but also from watching online. I know I keep talking to you guys about this One for Israel page, but you've got to go check it out. You can either just go to One for Israel, I think it's .org, or you can check out their YouTube channel, One for Israel. But they have testimonial after testimonial of Jewish people of all different um, histories. They have all different backgrounds, even though they're all Jewish. Um, some religious, some atheist, all these different things and how God worked miraculously in their lives to bring them to a knowledge of him. But that's the thing is that God will work supernaturally to help you to know if you are seeking him, you will find him. Why? Because he wants to be found of you. He wants to be found of you. Okay, so we finished up verse 32 about how whom God has, about the, the Holy Spirit has been given to those who obey him. Verse 33, when they heard this, this is talking about the religious leaders. They were furious and wanted to put them to death. 
But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Verse 36, some time ago, Thutius, or Thutis appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all his followers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census, and led a, people, a band of people in a revolt, and he too was killed, and his followers were scattered. Therefore, in this present case I advise you, Leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men and you will only find yourselves fighting against God. Wow, this is amazing wisdom from Gamaliel. I mean, just amazing. And he knows history and he can look back historically and say, look, these other men, they claimed that they were somebody. Maybe they claimed they were Messiah. They claimed they were going to do something for the Jewish people. But when they died, all their disciples scattered. Why? Because that's human nature. If the leader is stricken, everybody is scattered. And initially that's what happened when Jesus um, was taken away. The disciples were scattered. But something happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. Something happened. And uh, they knew that Jesus was alive. And so something was different. Why? Because they were witnesses of a resurrected Jesus. And that's what holiday we're going to be celebrating coming up on Sunday is the resurrection of Jesus. And the Bible says that for those of us that put our trust in him, that just as Jesus was, that just as Jesus died and was raised back to life, so we too who are in him, when we die, we will be raised back to life. So we have all those promises and, and, and the Bible says that we are hidden in heavenly places with Christ. It is so amazing when you are in Jesus that you have access to God, forgiveness of sins. The Bible says he will forgive your sins and take them as far from you as the east is from the west. You guys, and that he will remember your sins no more. Would you like to have your sins forgiven? I encourage you, take a moment right now and, and repent of your sins. Tell God you are turning away from your sinful lifestyle, that you are turning away from sin, and that you are instead turning to God, and that you are giving, give your life over to Him. You guys, I want to tell you something here, because a lot of people think just believing in God, that God exists, or that Jesus exists, is enough, okay? But um, even Satan, the Bible says even Satan and his angels believe in God. They know that he exists. What's the difference? They're not submitted to him. They haven't given their lives over to him. So I encourage you today to die to yourself, to say, Lord God, my life, I messed it up. I screwed it up. It's a major train wreck, Lord God. And I give it to you, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I receive Jesus as the payment for my sins. I receive that Jesus lived the perfect life instead of me. He did what I can't do. And that because Jesus died for me, all of your wrath went on him. And so now I'm free. And I thank you, God, for that freedom. And God, now I choose to live for you. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would come in me and seal me and cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness and help me to live a new life for you. And I encourage you to do that today. There's no better time than today to have life. Because before Christ, you are a walking dead person. You are like a zombie. You are living in sin and uh, shame and guilt and all kinds of bondage. But once you come to Jesus, you're free. You are free because the Bible says the one who the Son sets free is free indeed. And I can speak to that in my own life and many, many others, millions of people all across the world have experienced this freedom and, and we want you to experience that freedom as well. So let's continue on here in verse 40. It says that Gamaliel, Gamaliel, his speech persuaded them, and they called the apostles in and had them flogged. Okay, you guys, this isn't just chastising them and saying, hey, don't go sp speak in that name anymore. They had them flogged. That's like beaten and whipped. So it was serious. Um, they had serious authority. The religious leaders had serious authority to them. They weren't killed like they wanted them to be killed. They didn't, they didn't get stoned like how they, the leaders wanted them to get stoned, but they were beaten for the sake of Christ. And it says they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. Verse 41, then the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing 
because they had been counted worthy of suffering the disgrace for the name, the name in capitals, the name Hashem, the name of Jesus for God. And you guys, <laughs> that is not a natural response. A natural response to someone doing something wrong to you that you did not deserve. They didn't deserve being flogged. What they were preaching was the truth. So a normal human response for that is to fight back anger, resentment, all those kinds of things. But here we see that the disciples are rejoicing that shows you right there. This is a God thing, you guys. This isn't something that could be made up by people. Um, interesting also to note that the Sanhedrin and them couldn't deny the miracles. They knew that they were miracles too. So even Jesus's fiercest opponents recognized that they were miracles, actual miracles that were happening. So they're witnesses of the miracles, even if they don't um, go along. And in fact, some ways they're better witnesses of the miracles because they were opponents of it. They were opponents of Christ, and yet they bear witness to the miracles that were done. So um, verse 42, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. You guys, this is so exciting and we should never stop preaching and teaching that Jesus is the Messiah. It is so exciting. So, so that concludes our lesson from Acts chapter 5. I am super excited to share with you about Acts chapter 6 where we are going to find out what happened to Stephen. This is a really important chapter in the book of Acts. Um, you definitely are going to want to participate in this video with us. I just want to share with you really quick that Stephen was a man full of God's grace and power and he performed wonders and signs among the people. So you are really going to want to find out what happened to Stephen in the next episode and I just want to um, thank you guys and I'm just going to say a quick blessing over you guys and I look forward to uh, being with you on the next video. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word and your word is truth and I thank you God that when you act, um, it changes everything, God. And what you did with the disciples, Lord God, um, you changed them. You changed them from being uh, normal human beings, Lord God, that are scared of persecution, that are scared of what other people have to say. Lord God, for people that are living sold out for you and on fire for you, God, and we're so excited about that. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in our hearts and do miracles, Lord God. And whoever's watching this video right now that needs a miracle to be done in their lives, Lord God, I pray that you'd do a miracle according to your word and your will, Lord God, that you would do what needs to be done, Lord God, that you would reveal yourself to people, Father, because you um, are seeking us, Lord God, and I pray that many people would be found of you, Father God, and I just want to give you glory and praise and thanks, because as we come into Easter, God, I just thank you for Jesus. I thank you that he endured what none of us would have wanted to endure, Lord God, that he endured horrible things for us, Lord God, because of our sin. And I just want to thank you, God. And we just thank you that you raised him from the dead. And we look forward to King Jesus coming back to rule and reign. We are so excited about King Jesus, Lord God. And I pray that you would be lifted up, Father. And I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. We'll see you guys in the next video.